Well, praise the Lord and greetings to all of you. This is yours truly, Bishop T. David Dockery, Sr., Senior Pastor here at Greater Christ Temple Church in the city of Stockton, California. Listen, we're getting ready to go into a wonderful and impactful service where I know the Word of God is going to bless you, encourage you, heal you, and deliver you. You will leave encouraged by the message. Listen. The next time you're in the city of Stockton, the state of California, stop by Greater Christ Temple Church, 8800 Thornton Road. And I know that you will be blessed by the experience that you receive here. I would love to shake your hand and give you a hug and just welcome you to Greater Christ Temple. Now, let's go into the sanctuary and listen to this impactful word that's going to bless your life. God bless you. Uh, come on, let's give God his what's due him this morning. He's worthy, he's worthy to be praised. We came to send the praise up. We came to send the glory up. I will lift my hands in victory. I will lift my hands in victory. To the most high God, we praise your name. To the most high God, we praise your name. I will sing this song unto your name. I will sing this song. Worthy of all of our praise. Worthy of all of our praise. To the most, to the most high God, we praise your name. To the most high God, we lift your name, be glory forever. And we sing the glory of Hey, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory and the honor. Because you're worthy, God. All the glory goes to you and not to us. We come to give you the praise. I will lift my hands in victory. I will lift my hands in victory. To the most high God, we praise your name. We praise your name. I will sing this song unto your name. Worthy of all of our praise. Of all of our oh, praise. to the most, to the most God. we lift your name. To the most God. We praise your name. We lift your name. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Amen. Let me just take a let me step back and take a look, see what's going on in the house. My God. All right. Still got some activities going on over here. Has everyone had the opportunity to give? To give your, your tithing, your offering? Are we still under that 90-day window? I, I lost track. Are we still... 
Are we, are we still under that 90 day window? Amen. I've been hearing some, some things going on, some blessings and some increase and some, some harvest. And, amen. Someone walked in my office this morning and said that, uh, that they received an unexpected $50,000 in there that's going to be deposited into their account. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I could have took off running right there. Did, does anybody need an extra 50000 Just, Just an extra. Just, just an extra 50000 Amen. So we can give God praise and thank God for his goodness. Amen. I don't know what God wants to do this morning, but I'm, I'm feeling... I'm, I'm feeling miracles, but I'm also feeling healing in the house. I just, I'm just trying to trying to be led on what I want to, what direction we need to go in. So I'm gonna do this, and then uh, if if something shifts, just kind of go with me. But I really I really feel healing in the I really feel healing in the building. I just I just feel it. All right. So while you're standing, come on, lift your voice. Say, not a debt I owe, but a seed I sow, and everything I need is contained in my seed. Here we go. Jobs, better jobs, increase, bonuses, benefits, sales, better sales, interest, discounts, commissions, settlements, estates, real estate, property, income, checks in the mail, money on the ground, gifts, surprises, tax refunds. Royalties received, bills paid, debts canceled, mortgage paid, loans paid off, the ability to bless others, promotions, trust funds, harvest, financial freedom, perfect health, total healing, supernatural, debt cancellation, in Jesus name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Look at somebody and say, hey, it's in Jesus' name. Now, before you take your seats, look at somebody real quick. Say, neighbor, checks in the mail, money on the crown. Look at one more person. Say, hey, neighbor, checks in the mail, money on the crown. If you believe it, somebody ran back and shout, hey. Now, while you're standing, just go ahead and release a praise and a miracle down your road. Need about 25 people right now that are just God. Just release it right down the road, right in your area. Say, God, do it right here, right, right here. Ask God to do it again. God, do it right, right in here. Whoever sticks on my road, give them what they need. Whoever walks in the building, God, give them what they need. Whoever walked in heavy, God, give them what they need. Need about 20 people that give God praise for the next 30 seconds. Come on. Woo! You know, no, 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 Come on, give God some praise right in the building. He come to my motion. I like what the sign language ministry is doing. When I say give God a praise, they do like this. Yeah, somebody just leave your seat real quick and do like this.
before you take your seat prophesy to somebody and say your miracles in your praise tell them tell them again say your miracles in your praise hey God, I feel God in here. Just, I, I need y'all to flow with me real quick. I need y'all to flow. I told y'all I feel healing in the building. Just, I just need to do something real quick. Just take your seats real quick. I feel healing in the building. And I want to try to release that in the house as much as we can. I was asking God. The Lord spoke to me and said, there's healing in the building. We got to release it. I didn't know how to do it because, you know, we're under this, this, little, this little constraint here. We're not doing a whole lot of hands on top of stuff. I said, God, I don't know how to do it. Show me how to do it. Show me how to do it. He said, look at the oil. I said, okay, I see the oil. He said, get, look at the tissue. I said, I see the tissue. He said, pour some oil on some tissue and give it to everyone that walks around that, that want it. I, God, God will give you, he'll give you what to do if you ask him. Anybody that's believing God for a miracle right now, I need you to come up and just get in like my God, it ain't no shot.
everybody that got a napkin. I want you to find somebody close to you and look at them. Say, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Look at somebody and say, hey, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. The Bible said they was healed as they went. They were healed as they went. They was healed as they went. They were healed as they went. They were healed as they went. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hey. Oh. Well, it's time to give God some praise now. Praise him in the dance. It's time to give God glory. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Body, soul, and spirit. Wish I had a praiser in the building. Wish I had some young folk that'll give God some praise. Hey, no, no, shot. Wish I had some young folk that'll give God some glory. With a brother that I need some brother that's not afraid to give God some praise. Oh! All the praising women need some praising women to give God some glory. What a mighty God. And I know we love God. I see your brother in law. There we go. There's my running deacon. Hey!
give God some glory. Give God some glory. We got to go. That's why they call him Dancer. Oh! That's why they call him Dancer. We got to go. I give God praise in the building. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless you and we thank you for your grace. Thank you, God, for your presence that we feel right now. Thank you, God, for showing up. and Thank you, God, for allowing us to be a part of your program. Thank you, God, for those that were healed right here in the sanctuary. Instantly healed. And thank God for all those that will be healed as they leave. Now I pray, God, that you would save somebody. Let somebody accept you as Lord and Savior. Open our ears of understanding that the scriptures this morning can just feed us and give us what we need. Bless us, God, and we shall be blessed in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. God bless everybody. You can take your seats. We honor the goodness of the Lord, and we thank God for his, his presence. In the presence of the Lord, there is the fullness of joy. And we thank God for his presence. Because if God does not show up, we're just gathering. It's just, it's just a social gathering and we can we can have fun when we gather but if God does not show up in the place that we expect him to show up then we just gathered in a building but we always want the Lord to show up <clears throat> and to remind us that he's God and then to do something while he's here and I believe he has done that and I know we prayed earlier <clears throat> at the beginning, the onset of the, the service, and we prayed for um, Brother Farrell Hester, praying that God would touch his body. Um, got word that Sister Octavia Galloway had the loss in her family. Sister Eddie May uh, had a loss. Uh, the Warfield family, I think they had a significant loss. And we also continue to pray for uh, the family of our own brother, Charlie Saunders, and you'll hear some more information um, in regards to his celebration of life services that will be coming up um, in the weeks to come. Um, and we also want to pray for First Lady Nellie Stallworth. We're praying that God will strengthen the family, uh, touch them in a very special way. And we're also praying uh, that the Lord would just be God in that situation. We're praying God's will to be done. We always want to believe God for a wonderful outcome and to heal and to set free and to make whole. But at the end of the day, we want the will of the Lord to be done. Amen. And then we have to accept what God's will is, knowing that whatever
whatever God decides that it is, uh, it is God's will and God's purpose. And we accept God's will in that situation. But for the, for the most part, let's pray for that family. Pray for uh, their children and grandchildren. God will strengthen and, and allow them to, uh, to walk in faith and, and walk in trust. Walking in faith and walking in trust with the Lord. So that's what we want to do. Not going to be before you long um, at all. I promise you uh, that so much has been done. And I will be a fool to try to have church on top of what we already had. Um, but I do have something that I want to, uh, want to give to you. And to all of our guests and all of our visitors, uh, God bless you. Thank you for choosing Greater Christ Temple to come and to worship with us by a time. Um, I'll call you down here and let you, let you sing a little bit. No, I wouldn't do that. Uh, but if I had time, we would just I want to hear from some of you. Uh, but we don't have time for that. But we want to acknowledge you. God bless you, my brother. that's here on the front row. And my, my two little sisters right there in the back. Now, y'all been here before, like a couple of weeks ago or so. Amen. So we thank God for you all that are here. And if anybody else is here um, that's here for the first time, God bless you. And we thank you for choosing our church to come and to worship with us. If you have your Bible, your Bibles, your smart devices, your phones, your iWatches, or whatever you uh, find your, the Word of God on, please pull that out. And if you don't have anything this morning because you were so trying to get to the church, you just forgot it at home, uh, then just have to close your eyes and listen. <laughs> I'm looking at a particular a verse in First Corinthians chapter 15. I was on the plane last night uh, coming home. Um, I had to do a turnaround trip. I flew into Arizona, uh, got there at 5, showed up at the church at 5.30, had words, did what I had to do, left the church at 6.30, heading back to the airport <laughs> to get back on the plane. First thing, smoking, y'all know. And, um, and while, you, while you're finding 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're excited that we can try to find some type of normality. But I, I was cringing, Pastor Ernest. I was cringing on the plane every time somebody coughed. I was just like, oh, my God. I was cringing. I'm like, Lord, had, I was sunk down in my seat. And I, I tried to get as close to the window as I can get. Just coughing. Just <laughs> One of those nasty coughs to like, Lord, why, how, how, who let you out the house? Uh, but the, the wonderful thing is, is that they are very strict about wearing your mask on that plane. They're very, very strict. The people are trying to talk. And, you know, you, you talk, they, then they can't hear you, so you take your mask off. The lady said, no, put your mask back on. Don't, don't say nothing to me with a halfway mask. Don't, don't do that on this plane. We'll put you on the wing somewhere, but don't, don't do that. So they're very strict about that, so we thank God for that. But I'm just, um, it was, I was cringing every time someone coughed and sneezed. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Amen. But we made it, got home, and, and we're back. First Corinthians chapter 15. Looking at one verse there, verse number 10. Just one verse, and I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it in the King James Version. Then I'm going to read it again in the Message Version. And then we're going to go from there and don't know how it's going to end up. But I was on the plane and this kind of dropped in my spirit. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 10. This is Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. And he opens up by saying, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Did y'all catch that? But by the grace of God. I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I. You notice, notice how he said, I labored. Then he said, well, not, not I. God, God would only allow you to get so much credit. Y'all missed that. He will only allow you to get so much credit. Now, he, he, he was excited for a minute. I labored more abundantly than they all. Then he said, well, not, not I. It was, it was what? By the 
grace of God, which was with me. I did it because he was with me. I did it, but he was with me. I'm going to read it again in the message, the message Bible. It reads a little more, has a little more, a uh, little more ghetto on it. But because God was so gracious, so very generous, here I am. <laughs> and I'm not about to let his grace go to waste. Haven't I worked hard trying to do more than any other? Even then, my work didn't amount to all that much. It was God giving me the work to do. God giving me the energy to do it. So whether you heard it from me or from others, it's all the same. We spoke God's truth and you entrusted your lives. I'm looking at this particular verse. Just want to leave these words with you. I don't know how loud I'm going to get. I don't even know if I'm going to preach the way I normally would preach. Just want to leave these words. Simply says, I'm graced for it. I'm, I'm graced for it. My brothers and my sisters and all of you, what an awesome display of God's presence this morning. But what a display of God's presence when God shows up in the midst of a, of a desperate people, a hungry people, a people that, that does not take their praise in vain, people that, that recognize that I'm not, I'm not here because I'm so good. I didn't, I didn't get here because, because of uh, the, the strength of my own will. All of us are here today because we know that there's someone bigger and better than us that has enabled us to do what we have done. That's allowing us to do what, what we can't do ourselves. So the fact that God has blessed our praise to show up, to remind us that we need him. Isn't that something that God will show up, Monica, and let us know that we need him? And I know we're looking good this morning. We're looking good and smelling good and, 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 and did all these wonderful things, but we still need him. This particular verse, not a whole lot of reading, but the verse, Dr. Wanda, they carry so much impact. Because Paul, he lets us know, he opens up by saying, but the God of, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. We've got to understand people of God, and I'm almost through already. We got to understand that where you are, where I am, where we all are in this season of our life. We are only who we are because of God. And I know at times we want to take full credit for what we've done. Thank God for every degree that some of you have attained in your college life. Got one late in life, but I got it. Others went to school right after school. Others took a hiatus from school and went back a little bit later. Struggled. Didn't know how much school you forgot. But we accomplished some things. And though we have our own amount of success that we can hang our hat on. But like the folks say, at the end of the day, you have to give the credit and the glory to God. Paul reminds us and says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. He lets other people know, I don't care how you see me, what you think about me, what you think I ought to be, where you think I should be, what you think I'm not. I am what I am. 
by the grace of God. He not, he not only gives us words that are informative, but he gives us a revelation about who God is. This verse speaks to our stability in him. It speaks to our, our work. It, it, it speaks to our faith. It speaks to the fact of our journey. How we made it from point A to point B. Some of us, you got there faster than others. Others struggled along the way. But the truth of the matter is, people of God, you still made it. You ought to look at somebody and say, oh, but I still made it. We need to look and hold on to these, these few words. Hold on to it and embrace it and recognize it as, as, as one of the foundational pieces of our upward kingdom mobility. Our success and our strength in God. Got to understand people of God that even as God begins to order your footsteps. As he begins to pave the way as, as he begins to open up avenues for you. This whole verse is, is reminding us, never forget how you got where you are. This particular verse is reminding us of the providence of God on your life. God, I feel like speaking to a group of young folk this morning. Because there's a generation that's coming after us that we've got to prepare for. We've got to begin to sow. We've got to begin to uh, 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 mobilize and, and stabilize. We've got to begin to impart, train, develop, and mentor another generation and remind them of the God that brought us over. We've got to begin to remind people. We can never get to a place. We can never get to a place that we try to attain certain areas in life outside of what God has done for us. We can never get to a place, people of God, that you think you did it on your own will, your own merit. And I believe this is what Paul is trying to remind us. He said, I am what I am. Then he says, and his grace, watch this, his grace was bestowed upon me. He loved you enough to give you something that you're going to need in life. Thank God for money. We all need. The Bible said money answereth all things. Then one other verse says that the love of money is the root of all evil. We need it. But then if you forget how you got it, it can lead you down another way. He says it was grace that was bestowed. It wasn't anything that I had enough money to pay for. You don't have enough money to buy the grace of God on your life. You don't know enough people for the grace of God to sit upon you. You can't do enough, say enough. It was the grace of God, watch this, that was bestowed. He saw something in you and said, I got to give you something so you can make it. He said, Grace which was bestowed upon me. He said, watch this. And it was not in vain. I did not use his grace in vain. I didn't take advantage of it. In other words, he said, every time I got an opportunity to recognize how I got here, I opened my mouth and gave God the glory. Is there anybody in here? That can say, Bishop, after I looked over all my life, my ups and downs, the big, bad, the ugly. I can honestly say that God has been with me. Watch this. I'm getting ready to drop some money. Even when you was not with him, he was with you. Got to understand people of God. Paul goes on to say, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping everything up. He said, I, I am what I am by the grace of God. Then he said, his grace was bestowed upon me. It was not in, lane, uh, in vain. Then, then, then he began to turn back to himself. He said, look what I've done. He began to glory in himself. Look all that I've done. Look at my accolades. Look at my success. 
Look where I've come from. I wasn't the best of the best. Look at my pedigree. He bragged a little bit. Tell somebody, say, you can brag a little bit. He began to brag a little bit. I labored. I worked. I worked for this. If anybody ought to pat somebody on the back, I ought to be the one to have somebody pat me on the back. Then he had a wow and an aha experience. He said, I labored more abundantly than they all. Then he, he had to stop and use three words, yet not I. You can only brag so long. You can only use I so many times. Then you're going to have to stop and recognize who was helping the I. I did it. I did well. I, 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 I. Then he says, hold on, but who helped you? Who blessed you? I came out with my hands up. Yeah, but who opened the door for you? I came out in victory. Yeah, but who silenced the devil? I got victory all by myself. But who confused the enemy when, when you didn't know what to do? I came up, I came up with a wonderful idea. Yeah, but who gave you the mental capacity to understand the directions and the directives to do what you did? You can only brag so much. I labored more abundantly. No one can outwork me. Then he said, oh, yet not I. Because now I got to go back and realize that it was grace that was bestowed upon me. The grace of God which was, and I, I'm, I like this part and I'm done. He said, the grace of God which was with me. I got to tell everybody in here, Brother Will, that grace is walking with us. Oh, God. I'm going to give you a few points and I'm out of here. Grace is defined. It's the purpose. It's the strength of God on an individual's life. Grace, I know we like to say grace is unmerited favor, which it could be. But really, grace, grace is the strength of God for difficult situations. Grace. It's, 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 when, it's when God steps in, when all doors are being closed in your face, grace kicks in. Grace, great, it's, it's, it's the grace, it's the strength of God. When you would lose your mind, grace steps in and says, but you're going to hold on. When, 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 when you would have walked out, grace will anchor you and say, stand still. Grace, it's the strength of God on an individual's life. It is the ability of God working through and for somebody. Watch this. I like this. It's the I can and the I will of God on your life. Oh, God, I just said something right there. When Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. He can only say that because of God's grace. I can. So then I will. It's the I can and the I will that comes only from God. I'm going to give you four points and I'm done. Grace is a gift. Ephesians 3, 7. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God. This is for every minister in here. And I don't mean minister by way I, of, of I'm the one that sits in the pulpit minister. I mean a servant of God. He says, I was made, watch this, I was made a minister according to the gift of of the grace of God. Just, just tell yourself real quick. Say, I have a gift of God. So grace is a gift. Grace is then given. Romans 15, 15. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me. Grace is given to you. You can't pay for it. It's given to you. Grace builds you up, Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Any 
any time you embrace the word of God and you read and you stand on it, it builds you up. I'm afraid that we're getting to a place, Brother Tambura, that we are beginning to lean more on Facebook and people's opinion. Then allowing the word of God to build you up. It encourages, it uplifts, it strengthens, it establishes. Grace will make you strong. Second Timothy 2 and 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Last point I'm going to give you and I'm out of here, people of God. Then, watch this, we are saved. Saved by grace through faith that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Grace is a gift of God that leads us and pushes us into salvation. I'm going to read this verse again and I'm out of here. No, let me see. Remember when Paul, when Paul was struggling with with his own ministry. You know, the dancer, Paul was struggling with his own ministry. He was struggling about getting to the next level. He said, God, look, because of your grace, look, look, look what I've done. You, you, you've allowed me to see some wonderful things. You've allowed my ministry to expand and to explode. He said, but Lord, I got to be honest. I got something going on on the inside. I, I, I got this thorn in my flesh. And it seemed like that I'm being hampered by this thorn. I'm, I'm being hindered, hampered and hindered by this, this one thing. And some of you, you have one thing that's been your, your thorn. Some of you might say, it's a person that's my thorn. This, y'all ain't saying nothing. Some of you got one thing. I got one person. That's one. Lord, if you can just deal with that person. So he said, I... It's this thorn. Scholars believe that it was, could have been some health issues, eyes maybe. Or, or we don't know what it was. But whatever it was, it was to the point that he felt like this is the only thing that's keeping me from getting to the next place in God. And all of us in here, young folk alike, we've always made statements. God, if you, if you allow me to do this, I promise I'll do that. Have you ever done that in the course of your life? God, if you get me out of this. Y'all know you said that, God, if you get me out of this, I promise you, I'll go to Africa. I'll go to wherever, wherever you send me. Y'all know good and well you ain't going to Africa. You ain't going down the street, Harley. I'll go to the deepest part of the jungles, God, just to preach your word. To who? He was asking God, God, just... Help me with this, this thorn. Then he found out, God said, that he allows Satan to buffet him. God allowed Satan to taunt you. What, how, how, do, you, how do you view when, when God allows the enemy <laughs> to poke at you? Like he just waiting down the street for you. He knows what time you're going to get up, when you're going to go to work. Waiting in the parking lot for you. Like, here he come. I'm getting ready to taunt him. God allowed him to buffet him. He said, God, I need you to remove this thorn. Prayed three times. God, I need you to hear me. God didn't respond. Prayed again. God didn't respond. Prayed one last time. And then when God finally responded, Deacon Jones, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. He said, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. If you don't ever experience a weak moment, you'll never truly Appreciate the strength of God. He said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Then he said, most gladly, therefore, after he had his aha moment, 
He said, okay, God, you mean to tell me that when I'm weak, then am I made strong? Then he said, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities? In other words, it's not that he was asking infirmities to come. He just realized, okay, God, I understand now that when I'm going through what I got to go through, then I also know that grace, watch this, is with me. I know that you were blessed by the preaching of the word of God in this message. I know you found yourself somewhere in that message. I know the word of God healed, set free, and delivered you. And I thank God for that. Listen, the next time you're in our city, please come by and see me. I would love to give you a hug, shake your hand, and greet you with a wonderful smile here at Greater Christ Temple. God bless you, and we'll see you again next week. Jesus' name.